I'm Josh Feingold, Lead Solutions Engineer at Tom Sawyer Software. Since 1992, Tom Sawyer Software has been helping major organizations and governments understand their data. We've worked in fields as diverse as finance, engineering, networking, telecommunications, and defense and intelligence, which we'll be talking about today. Our Senior Technical Design Director, Kevin Madden, is going to walk you through a presentation on how you can use Tom Sawyer Software to dismantle criminal networks using Oracle Big Data Spatial and Graph Property Graph technology. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Kevin. And so today we're going to be looking at how we dismantle criminal networks using Tom Sawyer Perspectives. So here's our designer. We have a series of, um, we have a, an integrator, which is going to integrate police reports, police incident reports. And you have incidents, which is a crime or a 911 call, uh, people or person who's involved in the crime or incident, and then uh, the relationship. So we populate the incident using a gremlin query, which talks to the Oracle server, and it generates a tabular view. And then we have a series of views, which um, constitute our web application. So we have uh, a drawing view, a drawing view, um, another drawing view, a, a map, a, a series of trees, a series of charts, a series of tables, and a few more charts, and an inspector. So I'll just go ahead and deploy the application. And it's going to run, talk to the Oracle server, extract out the entities, and create the drawing that was in the Oracle uh, database, graph database, and present it as a view that you can see how the incidents are involved. So we have a series of controls across the top, which allow you to navigate the, the diagram. We have a timeline that allows you to see a histogram of when the incidents are occurring over a two-year period here. We have tree control on the left, which allows you to um, control the application. So we have a series of tree nodes that allow you to uh, see what, what incidents are happening um, and which police district those um, incidents occurred. So this one is demonstrating the symmetric layout. We have the overview control, which allows me to zoom around. I can quickly navigate my drawing here, and I can quickly see that there's a series of incidents. So I can say, I only want to see hardened criminals. I can change this drop down to say, people. I want people who are involved in more than, say, three incidents. And you'll notice that the drawing will, will filter down. See, there's now a hole here where there wasn't before. Um, these are people and incidents, and then you have people network, which is the people that were involved um, in the crimes. And across the top, you'll see a series of analysis algorithms, which allow you to run graph analysis or social network analysis algorithms on the data set as it's displayed in the view. Uh, so you have closeness centrality, eigenvector centrality, um, degrees of centrality, and k-core analysis. So I'll go back to the people network. I can say, show me the incident involvement. And it's going to show me over here. It allows me to then go over here. And I can say, uh, it's going to order them by who is involved in the most incidents. So I can quickly click on here and say, he, this guy here, Courtney Battle, is 41 years old. If we had an image, it would show or more information about that person, we would be able to quickly extract it here. Uh, I can click layout, which will allow me to position the nodes in the network. So you can see clusters inside the network here. We have several different layout techniques that you can use. You can use circular, which displays them via the cluster. So again, you can see more clusters in here. Um, so I can zoom down and, okay, I see a cluster here. If I take my select tool, I can quickly select this incident and I can go to my incident map and it'll show me 
it'll highlight on the just on the Google map here in this case where these incidents were occurring. I can also go down to my my um, my districts and I can see that they were occurring in the North District and the West District. Um, these are police districts where the police precincts are. And I can also click on where are these incidents happening via per department, uh, per district. So I can include or exclude different districts in, in, in the chart here. I can also go here and I can, I can go, okay, I want to understand um, between the centrality. Between the centrality is more like show me the middlemen in in this network as displayed. So if I want to identify who are the middlemen in this, I can if I need to stop how these networks are communicating or these network of crimes are occurring, I would focus on this man. And he he is the most central person in the communications of this network. I can run different types of analysis. So I'll run eigenvector centrality. And again, you'll see the ordering change. So eigenvector centrality um, is an algorithm that assigns a score to each node. This is the, like an influential, how influential a person is by uh, how influential their connections are. So if you're friends with Mariah Carey on Facebook, you know, you could be very influential. Uh, or, you know, if you're, if you're linked in with somebody who's very influential, the CEO of a big corporation, you are more influential. So even though you might have a few number of connections, it tells you um, that your reach is actually pretty strong, even though you have a few number of connections. So um, this would identifies influencers. And again, you can zoom around here. And you can bring up your overview window. And you can zoom here. So we also have our uh, symmetric or orthogonal layout, which shows it on a on a different view here. So you can see how all your influencers are clustered. And it allows you to focus in on who are your influencers and ignore the people that are less influential. I can clear the analysis results and um, uh, and I can run what we call an incremental layout, which allows me to minimize the uh, amount of change in the drawing. So it tries to keep the perspective of what you were laid out on before and allows you to continue. Um, so let's um, let's go back here. Allows me to do shows me what are the what types of incidents are are occurring. So I'm starting to see a lot of car prowling. And we're also seeing um, uh, property damage and burglaries. So if I go to my filters tree here, I can reset everything. And I want to focus in on burglary and car prowling. Burglary, and I want to focus in on car prowling. So it's just showing me this, just these two types of crime now. And now let's show all incidents of these. Um, and you'll notice that the model-driven architecture allows you to um, filter and just control what you're displaying. Um, so you're starting to see a cluster of men here. Let's go into the incidents and people. And I'll do a uh, orthogonal layout, a symmetric layout here. So again, you're seeing another cluster. So if I want to identify, if I'm a policeman, I can say, what's the timeline here? I can see there's a big spike here, and there's a big spike here, and a series of small spikes. So, um, so let's focus down on a on a region of time, and just try to include just those top. So, I can then I see a cluster here, and cluster here, and a big cluster here. So I can select these incidents. <clears throat> And look down on a map. Where are they? So I can see that these are in which district are these in? These are in the Northeast District. So I can say between April and um, 
you know, there's a big spike here, so I can continue to focus down on that spike here. Again, you see how the map updates and how you'll see that through this corridor, there's quite a, a frequency. So I want to say I'll, I'll run different types of analysis on here. Um, degrees of centrality, eigenvector centrality. So let's do degrees of centrality. Um, okay. So there's quite a group here. So actually it's um, degrees of centrality. Um, Degrees of centrality is the centrality algorithm that assigns a score to each node that is proportional to the number of edges. So this is somebody who's who's highly connected, um, and it allows me to continue to to diversify. So we have additional tools um, that allow you to navigate the drawing. Um, I'll show you some of the other ones. Um, incidence by type. I can see a, a line drawing. Um, and I can tell quickly what's the average age. Um, I can see a chart, and I can sort them by age, or I can sort them. So I want to say, all right, who's the who's the oldest person involved here? I'll click here, and then I'll go to the top. So, all right, well, so this is an 82-year-old man. He's involved in three incidents. So something something's up there. Um, you can sort it by ethnicity or the number of incidents. So only one incident. <clears throat> so we have incident involvement. I can go back up to here and again change more filters. Um, you can also search within the, mo the model. So I can type in. Um, and I can just I can see that there are three different people, and I can use the search bar to to navigate within the within the drawing. And again, your charts and your trees. But what it's showing you is how you can identify where to position people, uh, who are the most influential people involved in the network. And I also wanted to show you quickly how easy it is to change. Um, to switch to another view uh, in another case I'll show um, an investigation which just shows off some of the um, the graphics capability of Tom Sawyer perspectives uh, again it's HTML5 application full animation framework this is um, a, a particular investigation where you have um, a victim and I can click on Jane and it'll navigate me to Jane so Jane had a a, a, a gun um, that was stolen on April 10th, and she lives at uh, 10th Fifth Avenue, in New York. Um, it was stolen by Chuck White. The arresting officer was Bob Stewart. Um, Chuck White withdrew a thousand dollars from. Uh, he withdrew a thousand dollars cash from this bank account number. And there was a wire transfer on May 10th from George O'Sullivan. So it looks like George O'Sullivan was the one that was purchasing the stolen gun. Now you have um, additional cash, different views. Um, you have a subscriber to a phone. So I'll use my link analysis tool to follow me along. So there's a phone number here. And there's a phone call from the cell phone number, which allowed me to, to follow back and forth. So there's another call from George O'Sullivan, owns this phone, called this phone. And so again, you're starting to see some more phone phone communications. And you can go to the filters tab and I could say, well, I don't really wanna I don't really wanna see the um, the credit cards. Uh, you can filter out what you what you do and what you want to see. And it looks like, well, let's see, we'll do another layout here. Um, allows you to see it in a different fashion. 
and quickly navigate what's going on. So if you're trying to follow an investigation um, of a complex series of, of happenings, it allows you to track along with what's going on. So there's a flight, um, and there was uh, a hotel. There was a meeting at the Hotel Miami Plaza on a certain date. So it looks like John Joe and our Chuck White are brothers. Um, Tom Sawyer Perspectives Designer allows you to uh, control like almost like DB. So when when you you want to power the drawing, you can quickly use Oracle's Big Data Spatial and Graph to support trillions of elements, but you you don't want to display trillions of elements in the drawing. So when you when you power um, when you use back end um, big data platforms that also have very similar graph analysis algorithms, you can quickly um, go through trillions of elements and then bring it down to a smaller data set, which is much more uh, relevant um, for dealing with uh, network elements um, and only focus down on what you're trying to capture, uh, separating the wheat from the chaff. Um, ignore the elements that aren't of importance and focus down on what's important. And you can quickly build web applications or desktop applications or .NET applications that integrate using this technology. And when you have spatial data, time series data, um, or federated data sources, so you can augment it with um, uh, relational databases that have other information and you can pull a series of different information into a particular one. So you can use uh, any Blueprint compliant um, graph database. Uh, in this case, we're using Oracle. You can use any RESTful web service or JSON. Um, so if you want to connect to a RESTful web service, yeah, that's no problem. Um, any common delimited text file or unstructured or semi-structured or XML. And again, you can also code to it at a, level, at a different level. Uh, views, uh, you can quickly control toolbars and what, what elements you want to see in your toolbar. So you don't have to be a web expert or a JavaScript expert in order to, um, you just need a domain expert who understands the information and what, what constitutes a link. Um, so in this case, when we see an incident in, in the data, which is something happened, we want to add a node to the drawing. And it, we want to see the node incident. And we also have a series of templates which allows you to customize what the shape looks like on the screen um, using like VB type uh, configuration. Um, and you can also use, uh, you know, generate your tooltips, uh, what you want to see. Uh, you can data drive your images via a fence type. Um, you can set the fonts and backgrounds and customize different shapes. Um, and all kinds of things. Um, you can control your filtering uh, and your context menus. Uh, and each each different chart view has a different configuration. So when I see an incident in a tree, I can add a series of tree nodes. Um, and these can be multiple views on the same data set. So um, we have one data set, but we're showing in one view, we're showing incidents and people. And another one, we're showing just people. Um, so when I look at my my network. This is, you know, what, what's being displayed. Um, well, that concludes uh, dismantling criminal networks. Uh, please visit TomSawyer.com. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at Kevin Madden or kmadden at TomSawyer.com. Uh, thank you very much. Uh,